Good day and Merry Christmas to you all. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In the 17th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, we have a record of St. Paul's early missionary travels. When he came to Thessalonica, he caused quite a stir and uh, actually something along the lines of a riot in the city. Uh, the mob drug him before the city officials and accused him of something very upsetting. He was coming and he was preaching a message which turned the world upside down. And that is, in the end, quite an apt description for our Christian faith and for what we celebrate at Christmas time. What we celebrate at Christmas, of course, is well known to many, that is to say, the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary, in humble circumstances in Bethlehem around 2,000 years ago. And Christians say that this is the birth of their Savior, and it is an odd way for a Savior to be born. We would think uh, that for a Savior to be born, he should be born perhaps in, in a palace somewhere. Uh, he should be born into uh, a powerful family or have access to the levers of worldly power so that things could be changed, things could be done, things could be improved. But our Lord's birth was very different from what might be human and worldly expectations, even though he has come to be a savior. That is to say, although he has come to preach the gospel to the poor, he has become uh, as one of the poor himself. And as he is said to be the word and the wisdom of God, yet he was born as a babe who could not speak. And so there are many contrasts uh, and uh, in inconsistencies from a worldly perspective about our Savior's birth. He came to turn the world upside down, to take what would be human expectations and a worldly human way of accomplishing things and turning it very much on its head. Of course, one of the ways in which that is done, of course, is in the very way of his coming and who knew about his coming. During the season of Advent, we read the prophecies that prophesied of the birth of a Savior, the coming of God or Emmanuel amongst us. But the first person that knew about this very clearly was a woman, his mother, Mary, Ma uh, Mary uh, who uh, was... Uh, uh, given this information by the angel Gabriel nine months previous. Behold, blessed are you among women. Uh, and Mary saying, be it unto me according to the Lord's will. Mary is the first one to know very clearly and very succinctly the coming of the Savior. And also, another thing about Christmas time, which uh, many people would find unusual, is the gospel that is used uh, in the church service for the communion service in the Book of Common Prayer. It is not the familiar story, which it's assumed people know, of shepherds and angels of the manger and of the animals in that wonderful nativity scene. But what actually is read in church at this time is the gospel according to St. John. That is to say, it isn't the familiar earthly, worldly story of the coming of God amongst us, but it is the story of Christmas told, if you like, from the heavenly perspective. And this is the gospel for Christmas, which has been the gospel for Christmas, by the way, for roughly 15 centuries. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness overcame it not. And then finally, in John's Gospel, verse one, chapter 1, verse 14, And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The emphasis in the Gospel according to St. John is very much on 
who the Son of Mary is. All these other things, the shepherds and the angels, the manger and Joseph and Mary, all these things are in a certain sense peripheral to the central moment that we are marking as Christians on Christmas Day, that is the birth of our God amongst us. Again, God turns the world upside down. He does come into our midst. Think of that, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of even time itself, the one who keeps the universe together, being born as a lowly babe in the manger, the son of Mary, the word made flesh. As the scripture says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And as we all know from our Bibles and from Sunday school lessons, in the very first chapter of the Bible, in the very beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, when we have the creation story, uh, God spoke his word and it was so whether it be for light, whether it be for the creation of the seas, whether it be for the creation of animals, or for the creation of men and women made in his image, God spoke, and through the word, it came into being, it came into existence. And it is that word of God, the second person of the Trinity, our Lord and Savior, who is born the Son of Mary. And our Lord Jesus comes into our reality, embraces the limitations of being human, embraces the limitations of his creation, us, male and female, made in his image and likeness, in order to raise us up to his level of divinity. And so God comes amongst us with a mission, with a task to accomplish. He has come in order to accomplish our salvation by embracing the weakness, the fragility, the steps of being human, of being a newborn, of being the infant at the breast, of growing up and listening and obeying his parents, growing into manhood, and then beginning for three years uh, his public ministry, which is, to, which is to end in what again looks to be the world turned upside down, a complete failure with his arrest, his beating, his false trial, his crucifixion, and his death. But through all of this, God is accomplishing his purposes, namely our salvation out of the love of God, because of the love of God, for the love of God, as an expression of the love of God, our, son, our Savior Jesus Christ is born, the Son of Mary. And it is this extraordinary humbling of God himself, this extraordinary coming down to our level to raise us up to his, that we as Christians mark on Christmas Day. This is a moment of awe and wonder. This is a moment to celebrate. <clears throat> this is a moment of praise and a time for thoughtful, reflective adoration. May we indeed pray at the crib of our Lord and our Savior and our God. And may you all indeed have a blessed, a holy, and a merry Christmas this day. Thanks be to God. Amen.